So in the last video, we got our template set up in the in GIMP uh, for our card the way we want it. And so now what do we do for Excel? So if I'm making a uh, you know a space game or whatever, and it looks like the, the card template that we had, um, then I, what we're going to do is each column here is going to be something that will change in the GIMP file, right? So something on the image that we want to change is going to be each header. Uh, and in, in specifics, I guess, each header up here is a layer name. It's the name of one of our unique layers. But every layer has a little two-letter uh, extension kind of in front. And those, the two letters in front are going to tell the plugin, the Make My Cards plugin, what to do with the information. Okay, so each header is a layer, which means that each row right here, this row, that is one whole card. That's our first card, okay? Here's our second card, here's our third card, so on and so forth. So for this card game, um, I have a back, uh, let's see, made, yep, so I'm, I generically called this game Spaced Force, the space game, right? Uh, just for a demo here. So this is the only back I have, so I'm not using any other backs. So everything I'm going to make in this plugin is going to be my fronts, the fronts of the cards. So that's why I, I kind of went ahead and uh, named these card one, two, three, four, right, straight down, because they're all um, just the unique fronts. All right, so the design of this has two kind of beginning and end columns. Those two columns are generic. They, they, in fact, they get thrown away in the, in the plugin. So anything that is in these two columns completely goes away. Nothing will be there. But you need to have those columns there, um, and they, they just need to have something in them. Over here on the, on the beginning column, I put 1 to 12. I just numbered my cards. Back here, I just put Xs. Like, it doesn't matter what's there. It's just something that's got to be there. It's got to get kicked out, and it's because of the way that, um, that Python reads the CSV files. Um, it adds a little bit of junk in there that, that it's just easiest just to put in these buffer columns, okay? So you got your beginning and end, and every column in between will be something that actually changes. So this column right here, this is going to change the header. So if you remember, our header was right here. It was the card title, right? Alien guy or whatever it's going to be. So for each card title, I've got um, it in here, and it has the RZ command up front, okay? Um, and that RZ command, the, that two-letter command before the layer name, uh, tells it that this is a text layer that might need to be resized. So every, again, every header is going to be two letters plus the layer name. So that means the layer named header right here, this, uh, let me get my text tool, this layer may need to be resized because something won't fit. So if, you know, alien guy fits fine. For 70. But if I have a um, huge gas planet, it, that doesn't fit, right? And so it may need to be resized down to like, I don't know, you know, 60 or something like that. Oh, even that doesn't fit. So it'll need to be resized to something so that we can see the whole thing. 45. There we go, right? So that can happen. Um, and even down all the way down to five. But Again, if we change it with the up top here, um, it's actually going to revert back to the regular size of 70, which is what we want. So anytime it sees this RZ, it knows, okay, I'm going to keep in mind this is always the size font that it is over here, unless, unless what? Unless it, so... Uh, Garizit and Ramares and, and Dostolia, those are all going to be 70 point font. But if I see two digits in front of this uh, entry, that's going to be the new text size. So here, Jungularium, when it puts Jungularium in as that title for that card, it's going to make that font size 60. Okay? So all the entries without a number in front will be the regular 70 pixel size. But if it does have a number in front, 55. It's going to take two digits. It's got to be two digits. Uh, so if you wanted font size five, you'd have to put zero five. Okay. Um, it's going to take those two digits and make that the font size and then plug in Solar System. So this is going to be a font size 55, and the card title will be Solar System. It can only do that in resizing 
as far as the um, the command that you're going to give, okay, up in the column header. If it's just a TX, that's just plain old text. It's never going to change the size. You just plug in whatever's there. So this is the paragraph, the layer called paragraph. So uh, that's this layer down here, right? So that layer, we're just going to plug in whatever's here. So I'm going to plug in uh, full conspiracy theories. Here, I do have some Unicode. This is a Unicode symbol. Um, since we can't bold and italicize in there, you can get Unicode bold and italic letters, but you'll notice that these don't match the font very well. So you have to be careful if you want to use Unicode uh, to do that. And then uh, it didn't have a tab. I, I don't have it uh, programmed for a tab, so I just use spaces to get a tab, but it does have this new line. So if you want it to kick down to the next line, then you can put the backslash uh, uh, in, or sorry, forward slash, I guess, whichever slash that is, slash in, then that's the, the new line, and it'll kick that down. It's like hitting return, right? Okay, so um, all of these will change text. It's just going to change text. If it has RT, that's rotate text. So this is going to take any text that's down here. It's going to plug it in for the footer, the layer named footer, Okay, it's going to plug it in for footer, so that's going to be down here. There it is. And it's going to rotate it 180 degrees. How does it know to rotate it 180 degrees? Because anytime you put RT as your first two letters, then you're going to put three digits after it to tell it how many degrees to rotate it. So if you wanted to rotate it 90 degrees, 090. If you wanted to rotate it 5 degrees, 005. Okay, and that's going to be in the header. So everything's going to get rotated at the same angle. So all of these I'm going to rotate 180 degrees for the footer. So um, he swears the Han shot first. That's going to get rotated 180 degrees. Lots of shiny rocks. Got to get 100, uh, 180 degrees rotation, right? Uh, feels like Kansas in the 1930s. 180 degrees. Uh, it's going to be rotated. So the RT rotates by the next three digits, and then you've got your layer name after that. Okay, so here's a couple of TX, so that's just going to change text. Um, one thing to note in Excel, of course, this one, it thinks it's a number. So if you tried to put in 0, 1, uh, Excel doesn't like that. It turns it back into 1, right? So if you actually want true 0, 1, at least in Excel, uh, then I'm going to change this into a text, and then I can say it's 0, 1, okay? And then it'll plug in 0, 1. Um, so those are just text fields. Uh, the next command here is VS. That means visibility. So visibility is just on or off. So this is visibility for the layer named extension 01. If the plugin sees a 1 here, then for this card, it's going to make extension 1 visible. 1 means visible. So here, extension 2 is visible, extension 3 is visible. All three of those are visible. But if we look down here at card number 3, Dustolia, only extension 1 is visible. Extension 2 are going to be turned off, and extension 3 is going to be turned off. So if you remember those extensions were these kind of circular things over here. So it's going to be turning on and off some of those things. So VS, the two-letter command VS, means visibility. All right. Uh, LG, the command LG, two letters, and then the uh, layer unique layer name. LG is the layer group star icons. So we had a, a layer group named star icons over here. And so inside this group, I've got three different icons, these three icons right here. And I might be having different ones on. So for example, for Jungularium, it only has icon two. But for Supernova, it has icon two and icon three. Now remember that this, uh, so the, the, what you want to, to show, the layers that you want to be active, showing and visible, you're going to separate by a comma. Don't put a space in there. If you put a space in there, it's going to think that the space is part of the layer name, and it's not. So if I want uh, it to work, then I'm going to need uh, to, to be precise with it and make sure that it's just the comma separating. So if I want all three, you know, it might look like this. Icon uh, one, two, and three, all there separated by a comma. Leaving it blank means that none of them will be visible. They'll all be turned off. Okay. One more command that's available to you is OL, and OL means open as a layer. So what this is going to do is it's going to look for the layer named placeholder. It's going to calculate the center of that layer. 
So that's this background white piece right here. It's going to calculate the center of that layer, that black circle. And as it calculates the center of that layer, it's going to open this alien face JPEG. It's going to open that and center it at that center circle and put it right there. So that's basically my, my main card art, right? So I had to make sure that uh, down here for my artwork, I've got this placeholder here that uh, is the, the right size that I want. Now, all of these files here, Alien Face, Alien World 4, uh, ping, notice JPEG, ping, GIF, right? It can, whatever it's going to open, it's going to open that type of file. Um, it's going to center it at that spot, but they don't all have to be the same size. It, but you just need to make sure that your template is set up, your card template is set up to handle that because, for example, Alien Face doesn't take up the whole area there, so some background is going to be showing through. So if we don't make this correctly, uh, it'll look a little weird, which I'll show you once we run the program. Okay, and then, of course, we've got the end. So, uh, again, just to review, basically you have uh, three text commands at your disposal for setting these up. You've got TX, which just changes text. You've got RZ, which is going to change it, but might resize it if it needs to. And you've got RT, which will rotate text to any angle. So, for example, when I was making hex cards, I had to rotate by 60 degrees. So, I had RT 060, right? Okay, then for visibility, turning things on and off, you have BS, which is just on and off, if the layer's already there. You've got um, LG, which says, hey, in this whole group, which out of those, out of that whole group do you want actually on? And you have OL, which opens new images as a layer in it. Um, and then once it's saved that card, it'll then delete it and take it back out so it's not continuing to take up memory. Okay, so with my Excel sheet set up here, then uh, I need to save it as um, a I need to, need to save it as a CSV. Oh, sorry, one other thing. This is if you've got it all as fronts. If I want backs that are unique, so here was one that I set up horizontally. You can see here's number card number one, but this is also card number one. If you're going to have unique backs, then set up your CSV file so that this row would be the front of the card, the very next row would be the back. Then here's my new card. It's a bow and arrow weapon in a zombie game. Uh, that's the front, and then here's the back. Here's the front of the club, the back of the club. Here's the front of a crossbow, the back of the crossbow. So just keep alternating like that, okay? Uh, as you set up your CSV, if you want them to have unique card backs. Okay, so how do we save it as a CSV? You go up here to File, Save As, but first check your options. Make sure that here in advanced, you turn off this. If you have used system separators clicked, it'll delimit your CSV by commas. And we don't want that because some of our text has commas in it. So we want to uh, delimit by the semicolon. The easiest way to do that is to uncheck this and make sure that your decimal separator is a comma. So if a comma is used as a decimal, it will not use it in your CSV. Instead, it will use the semicolon. And that's what we want. You want the, the semicolon. So make sure this is unchecked and make sure that your decimal separator is a comma. Then you can save it as a CSV file. Um, so I've saved both of these separately as CSV files. We'll plug them in and I'll show you what that looks like uh, in the next video.